Hello everyone and welcome back to our discussion on applied anatomy of the pancreas basically focusing on embryology and today we are going to discuss the common congenital issues that happen during the development of the pancreas. If you have not seen the previous video please have a look at that because we have discussed the actual origin of pancreas from the hepatic and the dorsal mesogastrium and how the pancreatic duct is formed. So this video is more or less based on anomalies that can happen during this development. So if you have not seen the previous video, a quick recap, we have seen that the pancreatic duct is formed by the union of the duct of dorsal bud as well as the ventral blood. The black one you see here is the duct of the dorsal bud. Red is the duct of the ventral bud. After fusion, which happens around six week, okay, the duct is seen something like the yellow golden structure, okay. The main pancreatic duct is the duct of Wilson and the accessory duct is the duct of Santorin. In around 8 to 14 percent of cases or say 10 percent of patients, you will see that the duct of Wilson and Santorini fail to fuse. So what will happen is that the dorsal duct will remain patent and the ventral duct will remain patent and there will be no fusion. Okay. And this condition is basically pancreas divisum. What that means is that the ducts of the two birds don't fuse. It's a normal anatomic variant and is the most common congenital pancreatic anomaly. Incidence is 10%. All of these are commonly asked questions. So in pancreas division, what happens is that the minor papilla receives the majority of drainage through the dorsal duct. Now, when there is pancreas division, but with a focal cystic dilatation of terminal portions of duct of Santorini, then it is known as Santorini seal. Right. So this is again a commonly asked question. Now, when we go to types of pancreas division, type one is the classically described pancreas division where you can see the dorsal duct and the ventral duct, total non-union. Type two is absent ventral duct. The dorsal duct remains the same. And type three is incomplete division that they try to unite and there is a thin communication between the two ducts, but it is not enough. So basically a bifid configuration as we saw in the previous video, but with dominant drainage through the minor papilla. Now these are commonly described variants in pancreas division. Type 1 is classical, type 2 is absent ventral duct and type 3 is incomplete division. There is also a very interesting phenomenon known as reverse pancreatic division. And what happens here is that the isolated dorsal duct that basically should have formed a Santorini's duct, but here the isolated entire dorsal duct drains through the major papilla and unites with the CBD, whereas a small accessory duct drains through the minor papilla. So isolated dorsal duct draining through the major papilla with common bile duct. Usually we know that the ventral duct joins with the common bile duct. Right, But here the dorsal duct joins with the common bile duct and drains through the major papilla, whereas accessory duct drains through the minor papilla. And this is known as reverse pancreatic division. How can it present clinically? It can be an incidental detection on imaging done for some other reason or the patients can present with pancreatic type of pain resulting in acute pancreatitis, repeated episode, basically recurrent acute pancreatitis can also result in chronic pancreatitis but the incidence is less when it comes to imaging you saw this diagram in the first slide this is a classical pancreatic division on the mrcp we have a separate video on mrcp if you have not seen that you can understand the anatomy better Basically, this is the dorsal duct, this is the ventral duct, and this is the common bile duct. So when you see the two ducts crossing each other on an MRI, you are looking at pancreas division, some easier way to understand this concept. Secretin MRCP or secretin ultrasound also done, both can aid in diagnosis. When it comes to treatment, endoscopy is the treatment of choice. You can dilate the minor papilla or do a minor sphincterotomy with or without stenting of the minor pancreatic duct. 
surgery can be minor plus or minus major sphincteroplasty. It has been observed that when the CFTR mutations are present, the patients have increased risk of pancreatitis in presence of pancreatism and the treatment is also associated with increased adverse outcomes. On the other hand, if there is a demonstrable stricture on MRI at minor papilla and a symptomatic pancreas division that is increasing episodes of pancreatitis, these patients may benefit more from treatment. So, adverse effect on treatment is if the cystic fibrosis mutations are present, demonstrable stricture and symptomatic pancreas division have better prognosis. Coming to annular pancreas, as we had discussed in the first video, the lateral duct is bifid. There is a right part and the left part. The left part usually regresses. However, when the left part of ventral bud persists, it can result in a condition known as annular pancreas. This is a condition where the left part goes around the duodenum and the right part goes behind the duodenum and it can form a constricting ring of pancreas. Annular is a ring, right? Round, circular. So annular pancreas is basically a ring of pancreas causing duodenal obstruction. Remember that this obstruction is usually above the insertion of common bile duct, right? So this is the insertion of common bile duct. And usually this obstruction is above and that is why the patient will present with non-bilious vomiting. That is, bile is not present in the vomiting. Annular pancreas was first described by Ecker. Incidence is 3 in 20,000 to 3 in 1,000. There are three theories associated with it. Lacos theory is that there is no persistence of left ventral bud. This occurs due to adherence of right ventral bud to the duodenum instead of rotation. Baldwin's theory suggests that there is persistence of left ventral bud. There is a Kamisawa's theory which suggests that the tip of the left ventral bud adheres to the duodenum and forms a ring. It has a familial preponderance and the genes that can be involved are duodenal sonic hedgehog signaling pathway and Indian hedgehog of gene of pancreas. So these two genes are associated with annular pancreas. In clinical presentation, it can present in the first week of life as duodenal obstruction with non-bilious vomiting. Like I said, the block is above the ampulla, so the vomiting is non-bilious. Neonatal life, it can also present during the pregnancy with polyhydroamnios. Associated anomalies, it is most commonly associated with Down syndrome, 21% cases. Intestinal malrotation and non-rotation, omphalocele, mobile right colon, situs inversus, duodenal, atresia. Tetralogy of phalate is also associated with annular pancreas. So as we know, when a congenital anomaly is present, it is very important that the entire kid is assessed to look at these associated abnormalities. In adults, the most common symptom is abdominal pain and duodenal strictures. Gastric outlet obstruction is quite late and it is more common with incomplete annular pancreas because if it were complete, the patient would have presented earlier. Coming to treatment, the duodeno duodenostomy is preferred in children more than duodeno jejunostomy because of low incidence of blind loop syndrome and obstruction. So when you do a duodeno jejunostomy, the entire D3, D4 and the DJ junction create a blind loop. And that is the problem where blind loop syndrome can occur. So in children, a duodeno duodenostomy is preferred more than duodeno jejunostomy. In adults, depending on the problem, a Whipple may be required, longitudinal pancreatic or jejunostomy, pancreatic or biliary sphincteroplasty may be required, hepatic or jejunostomy and cholecystectomy may be required. Now you saw a crocodile on the first slide of this video. This is because when you see an annular pancreas on a cross-sectional imaging, the two parts of the pancreas and duodenum in between, the two parts of pancreas create a crocodile jaw configuration. And that is why 
the imaging sign of identification of annular pancreas is crocodile jaw configuration of the two parts of pancreas, one anterior and one posterior to the duodenum. Now coming to heterotopic pancreas or ectopic pancreas as described by Jean Skulls, it is basically a tissue of pancreas with its own blood supply separate from the original pancreas. Most common site is duodenum, but some books also suggest that most common site is gastric antrum. It is a submucosal lesion. So whether it's gastric antrum or duodenum, it is a lesion in the submucosa. Other sites include jejunum, Meckel's diverticulum, fallopian tube, esophagus, gallbladder, bile ducts, spleen, and mesentery. Remember that heterotopic pancreas is also active pancreas and it can result in GI bleed. A submucosal growth can result in intestinal obstruction, melina, and this submucosal polypoidal growth can act as a lead point in into susception. Definitive diagnosis can be obtained by histopathology only and whenever we discuss heterotopic pancreas during surgery, resection is the treatment of choice. Now some rare congenital issues, pancreatic aplasia, basically absence of pancreas is inconsistent with life, whereas pancreatic hypoplasia can be seen with heterotaxia syndromes. You can have isolated dorsal hypoplasia or isolated ventral hypoplasia. Accessory pancreatic lobe, you can see a tongue-like projection from the normal pancreas. It is seen in presence of a gastric duplication cyst. The junction of the accessory pancreatic duct with the main pancreatic duct can develop strictures in elder life and this can result in chronic pancreatitis also. So in this part of this series, we have seen the embryology in the previous video and the commonly seen congenital issues in pancreas in this video. In the upcoming parts of this series, we will look at the blood supply of the pancreas and then look at the lymphatics and the now supply and thereby conclude this entire series. A lot of applied aspects, a lot of multiple choice questions, something that will help you while you are studying pancreatic anatomy. Thank you.